I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we gather at Scripps College on the traditional lands of the Gabrielino Tongva people, <clears throat> past and present, and honored with gratitude the land and those who've served it throughout the generations. Land acknowledgement is one step towards correcting the practices that erase Indigenous people's history and culture. As a practicing artist, I was invited to speak to you today about how the arts fit into a liberal arts education and to share a little of my work with you. For those that are new to California, I thought you should know that California's creative economy produces over $600 billion a year and employs over 2 million people. That makes it the fifth largest sector of the state's economy after agriculture, technology, and tourism. To put that in perspective, it's about 15% less than the total economy of Switzerland. So looking towards the future, we can expect more streaming media, more online publishing, and generally there's gonna be a need for graphically compelling content in every field and the technology to deliver it. <clears throat> but technical skills are only half the battle because as technologies change, creative problem solving and critical thinking will be your greatest tools. So I wanted to begin uh, this morning with the billboard project of mine that was in Trenton, New Jersey. Uh, in the weeks leading up to the 2018 midterm elections, it was one of four billboards I, I did as a part of For Freedom's 50 States Initiative, um, which was a national effort to get out the vote through art. <clears throat> the organizers invited over 150 artists to share their artwork on billboards in all 50 states, and I had work in four different states. Here's the same billboard when it was first shown in 2010 in Los Angeles. The bust on the left is Italian from 1520. The bust on the right <clears throat> is believed to have been a slave in England in 1758. We don't know who commissioned these works or why, but we, are, we know they're both at the Getty Museum where I photographed them. I brought them together digitally, but left an expanse of white space in the center. I imagine the space as a kind of absence to stand in for or to signify the missing histories. It was a space that might normally be filled with text, a silence that spoke to the physical displacement of people through conquest, colonization, and slavery. It was about black and brown diasporas. It was about decolonizing the museum by bringing work out of the museum, but it was also about the struggle for marriage equality. Some of you may remember that in 2008, California's Proposition 8 banned same-sex marriage and was approved by voters and was being challenged in the courts when I made this billboard. The law was overturned in 2010, just three months after the billboard came down, and my work was just one of many responses in support of the queer community. In June 2015, the Supreme Court struck down all state bans and legalized same-sex marriage nationally something I never thought could happen in my lifetime. Here's another work, also from the Four Freedoms Initiative, this time in Nashville, Tennessee. Working as a photographer, I often erase or alter existing images and give them new meaning. To erase something can be seen as a form of displacement or destruction, but in my work, I've tried to turn erasure into a site of production and an absence into a constructive presence that critically engages viewers and creates new meanings. When I began the Erased Lynching series, I wanted to make a project about whiteness and racial injustice, but I didn't want to re-victimize those who had been killed. Since then, the series has helped raise awareness of the lynching of Asians, Blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and whites in California. According to the Equal Justice Initiative, over 4,000 African Americans have been lynched nationwide, and while no artwork can address the ongoing pain and trauma of lynching to African Americans and their families, my project was produced in solidarity with a wave of new scholarship in the, on lynching in the early 2000s. The photographic image seen here depicted the lynching of two white men, kidnappers in San Jose, California in 1933. By erasing the bodies, and the ropes in the image uh, and others in the erased lynching series, we begin to see similarities between lynch mobs across the nation, across time, which helps us to consider the relationship between vigilantism or violence and whiteness in America. By now, you've made out the pair of well-dressed young lovers on the left, or the two male students staring back at the photographer, the many men in suits, and then there's the young woman on the far right, her mouth wide open, as if caught yelling or laughing out loud. 
Here's an installation view of my work at the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. last year. The exhibition included a selection of the erased lynching series that drew uh, on my documentation of over 350 cases of lynching in California, which identified for the first time that Latinos made up 44% of those cases. Since then, over 500 cases of Latinos and Latinas being lynched have been identified nationwide by other scholars. <clears throat> In this image, you see a blown up version of one of the many thousands of lynching postcards that were made and sold in this country. The vast majority of these postcards depicted the lynching of African Americans. But in this case, we see US soldiers in uniform after they've killed a Mexican along the US-Mexican border sometime between 1913 and 1919, a century ago, 100 years ago. As you can see, I've erased the body and the rope from the center of the image but have left the soldiers. And you can make out their smiling and grinning faces for the camera, the ghostly pantomime of hands curled around a missing rope, and the now familiar characterization of Latinx victims as bandits and criminals as reflected in the original text along the bottom. It says disguised bandit. My next image. Thank you. Here's another view of the series. The Smithsonian exhibition tried to show that the characterization of Latinx communities as criminals, rapists, and drug dealers coming out of DC isn't just political rhetoric. It puts people at risk, as we saw in the recent shooting in El Paso, the separation of families along the US-Mexican border, and the troubling increase in white nationalist hate groups. As Americans, we send our condolences to those who have lost loved ones or who were impacted by these very real events. As a Latino, I know it will take time for faculty and students to process what has happened. I know that there are many critical issues facing us all right now. I wanted to share my work with you today to say that we can all find a way to contribute, from art to activism, and regardless of your academic major, that we must all find a way forward. I thought I would end with this image, which of course is about race, whiteness, and difference, but it's also about things we share. The American novelist Toni Morrison seemed to have understood our own historical moment when, in 2004, she wrote, quote, I know the world is bruised and bleeding, and though it is important not to ignore its pain, it is also critical to refuse to succumb to its malevolence. Like failure, chaos contains information that can lead to knowledge, even wisdom, like art, close quote. Here, each bust in profile each has curly hair, slight double chins, and cute button noses. And we think we're looking at race, at black and white. But we're really just looking at two blocks of stone. And stone has no race. Part of the point of this work is to remind us that both race and gender are social and historical constructs that we carry within us. Ideas that you will be unpacking through CORE and other courses in my own work, I borrow from restorative justice practices where punishment is replaced with reconciliation and restitution to create works that contribute positively to public discourse. I know that not everyone here is going to pursue a career in the arts, but I hope you will take a class, attend a performance or exhibition, and for first years, you will be exposed to new ideas, but you will also help each other study and to see issues in new ways. I also know that some of your best friends are here in this room. You just haven't met them yet, <laughs> but you will. So in closing, I just want to encourage you to follow your passions, to engage critically and creatively, and to know that we can do more together than we can apart. Thank you. <clears throat>